much. I, like, I'm a wreck. Like, and you don't get it out of me much, but that was full on. Yeah, emotionally, it, it does affect you a bit more than the normal. It's always concerning when people come running up to you from the public because there's a lot of panic on their face. They'll report with someone's unconscious a little bit further up the beach. So I just needed to get there quickly and figure out what had happened. Two surf instructors found a man lying face down in the surf and dragged him to shore. Uh, can we get an ambulance down here, please? He was close to unconscious, but still a little bit of life there. And his eyes rolled to the back of his head, which is obviously worrying. He kind of looked like a demon. Dazed and confused, the patient behaves erratically towards the men who saved him. I'm feeling really bad for the patient at the moment. He's clearly disorientated. He doesn't understand why we're there uh, and why he actually needs help. Veteran lifeguard Azza backs up. Lifeguards have no idea how long the man was floating in the surf or how much water he may have inhaled. Okay, just put her out, make the guy down with his back. Calm down, roll him over. That way. Yeah. Uh, no, no, no. Push arm up, straight. The risk of having a second seizure is at its highest within 15 minutes of having the first seizure. So we tried to get him into the recovery position as quickly as possible. The man's mother arrives on the scene. She may have critical information. Does he know to have any seizures? No. No? Has he been drinking at all today? No. No drinking? Okay. No. You all right? The patient's name is Paul. He and his mother have travelled from the UK to visit his sister. Just check his breath rate. Yeah. We're just going to move you back a little bit. Oh, good boy, good boy. Come on. Just walk over here, we'll walk away from the shore. Come on. With a rising tide, lifeguards move Paul to higher ground. But he's still resisting help. Sit down, sit down here, relax. Sit down for us, buddy. Oh, Paul. Paul, Paul, sit down for me, please. We're just going to help you out. Paul, just sit no, down. Yes, we're just helping you out. Sit. You went unconscious in the water, okay, buddy? You need that a bit of help. You need the water. You laugh, Paul. Buddy, you're soaking wet. Sit. Paul, you need to sit down, buddy. Whatever he's been through, it's obviously taken a, a pretty massive toll on him. Uh, he has no idea where he is, where he's been, or that he's had a pretty significant medical episode. Sit Come down on. for us, buddy. Just gonna have, get well, your breath gonna back. Help you. That's it. That's all. Just We're gonna, gonna get, get your help. breath back. You just need to sit down. You're in the water. You're soaking wet. You've been in the water. You just got pulled out of the water. If Paul doesn't comply with lifeguards' instructions, his condition could rapidly worsen. Bend your legs. Bend your legs. Bend your legs. Bend your. Legs. Bend your... You gotta help us help you, okay, mate? I'm here, water. Mate, you gotta sit down. There you come, please. All right. All right, buddy, we're just here to help you. Lifeguard's priority is to administer oxygen. Paul, this is gonna make you feel a little bit better, okay? It's just oxygen, okay? Just put that on. But Paul's vital signs are disturbing. Second round to central. He's got a pulse of about 60. And oxygen back of 91. Uh, he's very poorly refused and uh, it's not really improving with the oxygen. Copy, Jerry. His condition is still precarious. At this stage, he's got quite poor saturation, which is low oxygen, and he's very poorly perfused, which means his blood isn't moving as well as it could. Based on the readings that I'm getting, my first guess is water in the lungs. Go on your side. Oh, we're just going to roll you on the side again. It's right now that we need the paramedics here as soon as possible. Time is quite critical at the moment, so it's a real relief when I can hear those sirens. Is it possible to get him on a board on one of your buggies and get him sure. yeah. up there? Yeah, we'll get the board. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Tests will hopefully reveal why Paul blacked out. But there is a more immediate concern. The paramedics are fairly certain that he's taken in a bit of water in the lungs. So they've taken him off to hospital to get that pumped back out. One, two, three, three. It's 
All in all, I'd say the patient was quite lucky. I hope he's doing okay, and I hope one day he can come back to Bondi and, and have another surf without any drama this time. I just know was out the back. If he was out the back, he would have sunk. We're so lucky. So lucky that the surf instructor's down here. So it was so crowded, we didn't know where we were going or what we were about to, to face. Ambulance, thanks. The lady looks to be in her 60s. She's clenching her teeth and she was foaming at the mouth and it was pretty confronting. Hello, darling. Can you hear me? Hello. Can you hear me? Uh, look, uh, uh, apparently a lady's had a, had a fit. Um, the boys can't give me any details as yet because they're working on her. I don't even know if she's conscious yet. The pulse, she's sweet. She'll come in a sec. In any situation where someone's unconscious, you know, your blood's pumping, your adrenaline's rushing, you're not a doctor, you don't know what's going on, you just sort of assess the situation how it is. Is there any relatives or anything with her? No, okay. No. She was tanning on her stomach. How long had she been laying there? A lot. Oh, since we got here, but she only just started having the fit. Now, like five minutes before you came, we saw her shaking. When someone's having a, a seizure, really you've got to mainly try to make sure they don't hurt themselves in any other way. We will check and make sure they've got a real strong pulse. And we were just trying to comfort her and we were trying to get some oxygen into her because it was a very hot day. You might grab your umbrella. You're amazing if you could do that. All got essential, Harry. Going through a bag to find medication, epileptic pills, see if she's a diabetic, she'd be in a diabetic coma. Find anything? Yeah, yeah, at this stage she's, she's still like deep in a sleep. She's breathing fine. Pulse is 76. When situations like this happen, unfortunately we get a ring of death is what we call it, when a big crowd of people surround us and it's very hard to work in those conditions because you're trying to look after the patient and, you know, it gets a bit claustrophobic because everyone's come rushing in to try to see what we're doing. Harry, I've just got the right squad police down here. They're going to give you give a hand with the... Um... Yeah, coffee, beer, fantastic. Hello. That'd be great. We're trying all kinds of things to trying to communicate with this lady. Open your eyes for me, mate. Hello, the ambulance. We started to get some kind of reaction, but then things just went completely pear shaped. Well, I was really upset about the whole scenario. I felt so sorry for her. She's had a seizure, it's hot, she's in this massive crowd, and she's woken up, and there was two or three of us in uniform with the paramedics there, and, and it would have been horrible for her. It's all right, it's all right. It's all right, it's all right now. It's all right. The big shock was she came to, she regained consciousness, and then we realised she was deaf. Oh, what's your name? Oh, okay. It's pretty distressing, you know, but you obviously got to stay calm. Um, let's try and work out a um, way of getting her up the beach. Yeah. You know, you feel helpless at times. You know, I've had a lot of things happen over the years, but this situation was something we hadn't dealt with before. It was becoming really hard to deal with. Well, ultimately, the paramedics needed the police assistance because they couldn't leave this poor lady on her own in that situation and they had to take it to hospital. You know, I just wanted to let the public know that we're there for the lady and we're there to try to help her. Well, they had a duty of care, I think, that they had to see through. So, unfortunately, even though she didn't want to go with them, she had to. Because if something was to happen to her, well, there's a neglect there and it's just not right in today's society. You can't do that. We never actually found out what was wrong with the lady. But at least we know she's in great hands with the paramedics and she's going to get a thorough check out at the hospital. You just know, hot day, something's going to happen. So I headed down to the northern end of the beach and out of the corner of my eye, I see a guy fitting and he's literally... I seen him falling. Yeah, guys, come down north. I've got the, uh, the homeless bloke. He's having a fit down here. I better go. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry, mate. I'm I'm down down I knew, I knew it was going to be really difficult. I had to get back up. Just remember that thought of, oh, no. Nah. Mick, the jogger notorious for his white speedos, is having a seizure at the north end.
Yeah, copy, mate. So I'm getting an ammo. Harry's is already there. Uh, Luke's gone down as well, oh, and Jesse's there. We're lucky. We've got an ambulance parked across the road um, out the front of Bondi Surf Club. So we're going to try and see if we can get those guys to attend. I saw them there earlier having a coffee, and then, yeah, we're really lucky because they're attending. They're right here. Hey, guys. Hello, buddy. How are you feeling? It's the ambulance. We got the paramedics down, and then it just pretty much snowballed from there. So next we're going to get the spineboard in behind him. Yeah, we'll see how we go. Mick, well known for avoiding human contact, is about to find himself surrounded by half a dozen people as soon as he regains consciousness. Who's going to lift I you count up? Three. I knew he was going to be hypoxic when he woke up. It's lack of oxygen to the brain. And I knew all hell was going to break loose. Ah! Help! Help me! Can you stop that? He needs to be examined by doctors. Lifeguards restrain Mick ah! while paramedics administer a sedative. It must have been pretty hard for Mick because we had him strapped to the spinal board. Even with five lifeguards and two AMBO officers, we were struggling to, to keep him down. We're trying to help you. Help, please! I promise we're trying to help you, mate. Please. It's extremely upsetting to see someone like Mick in pain, and I felt like we were inflicting the pain to a degree. Eventually, Mick is sedated and can be transported to the ambulance for further medical care. I count of three. One, two, three, let's go. Three, no, we one, do. A lot of rescues with people you don't know, and, you know, Mick's a character that we see every day. Lifeguarding is emotionally taxing. Even more so when the lifeguards are dealing with someone they know. I need to sit out. <laughs> need to get me breath back. It's very physical and it's and it's emotional too. You know, so I, I'm a wreck. Like, and you don't get it out of me much, but that was full on. I don't really know Mick personally. I only know him from seeing him run the beach every day. And uh, yeah, emotionally, it, it does affect you a bit more than normal. That's got to me for sure. Um, you know, it's just something that we've got to deal with down here, you know. We've just got to get through the rest of the day now. It's only 10 o'clock in the morning, so fingers crossed nothing else happens. When we have patients having episodes, our, our primary adjustment for them is, is their own care. Depending on the severity of them, they can last from 30 seconds or a substantial amount of time. Right there, Alex. Alex came to the beach with some fellow backpackers he's only recently met. He hasn't been drinking alcohol, no drugs, no nothing today. It's a bit of hungover, a bit of, that's about it. Yeah. Any number of triggers can cause a seizure. Have you guys seen him eat anything today? I think he got a coffee earlier. Yep. Yeah. yeah. All right. The club is getting an ambo now. Seizures occur when nerve cells fire more rapidly than usual, momentarily acting like an electrical disturbance in the brain. It, it was confronting, you know, he bit his tongue, there was a lot of fluid, he was thrashing around. Yeah, we just got to really monitor yeah. him, make sure yeah. his airway's clear. Seizures which last longer than five minutes are classified as a medical emergency. He's just probably biting on his tongue or his head. Alex's seizure has now been going for 10 minutes. I'll take the head if you want. I have come across episodes like this that have lasted a substantial amount of time. And when they do, you basically can cook yourself and cause some major neurological damage. Lifeguards have limited experience in treating cases like this. Unfortunately, we're not doctors, we're not paramedics. We can just turn up and be that first responder until the paramedics come. The seizure has now been going for 15 minutes. I know it's crucial that the paramedics turn up or this guy's in serious danger. Paramedics arrive to find an awake but confused and disoriented patient. Alex, do you remember what I told you my name was before? Alex? It's almost like hitting restart on a computer. There's a bit of a time to, to reboot the system and work out what's going on. We just got some oxygen on for you, Alex. In his dazed condition, Alex resists the paramedics. So just, just, just let him go for a second. Okay. You got his arm there? Yeah, okay. Right. Do you want us to strap him down? Yep. 
as best we can. Okay, so I'll get this thing nice and tight. One, two, three. Right, go ahead first. Unfortunately, strapping him to the board so he doesn't injure himself yeah, yeah, yeah. is crucial. Everything's under control. All right. We just got you on a board just to get you off the beach, all right? Everything's OK. You're not in trouble. OK, we're just trying to look after you. Unfortunately, when we were loading Alex into the ambulance, he was slipping back into this episode. Yep. Keep, Keep, down. Down. Keep going. But it was good to see him go off and receive yep. the advanced care that he needs. We don't often hear about the outcome of patients we treat, but hopefully Alex is doing OK and he's continuing on his trip around Australia. We had a phone call from the boat ramp and saying the kid slipped over, hit his head, pretty much mashed his head up, and he's had a seizure. Tommy is unsure about what to do next. So I just had to pause and think of how I was going to deliver it on the radio um, and let the boys know it was serious but not cause any mass panic or anything. Uh, for my essential, two lifeguards across the road. We just had a kid take a heavy head knock on Ben Buckler. Uh, so if we could get you guys back here, that'd be good. Thank you. Yeah, mate. On our way. Yeah, he doesn't look good. The young man is not epileptic. Seizures caused by head injury require massive force. Like out near the boat ramp? Yeah. The sort of mixed things that go through your head, you know, we're sort of going there. I'm just trying to picture how bad his head knock could be for him to have a seizure. Boat ramp, boat ramp? Yeah, boat ramp, boat ramp. The boat ramp is situated at North Bondi. Jake and Tommy traverse the rocks. On arrival, they discover 15-year-old Dom severely concussed. You could just tell in the eyes he was out of it. He had the eyes where he was looking straight through you and you'd say something and he was delayed response. Can you tell me what day it is, Dom? <laughs> um. After him not being able to tell me the day, it, that sort of escalates it a little bit more. You know, you're looking at, you know, potential brain injuries, you know, could be internal bleeding. He just, he's, he needed an ambo. He, he'd had a good head knock. As an ambulance is called, Lisa, a woman at the scene, reveals what happened. I looked down and he was fitting. So I just ran down and just lifted his head up and I could see there was like blood everywhere. Um, then he was starting to turn blue because his mouth was full of foam. Head injuries can cause bleeding on the brain. Trainee lifeguard Tommy is unsure how to respond. They've been a trainee, it's pretty hard on the boys. You know, they try to put on a brave face a lot of the time. You know, deep down inside, you know, obviously you know they're pretty nervous and they're obviously themselves. Just those things that aren't standard and you haven't trained for, they're the ones that you get most nervous about. Here we go. The professional in the business. What's happened today, mate? I don't know. Not sure. Biggest comfort for him probably was this, you know, young lady. <laughs> My mum's like a really severe epileptic, so I like, grew up with people, work with her feeding all the time. So I kind of, yeah, knew what to do. It's unclear if Lisa knows Dom already. They seem pretty content, um, you know, He's getting a lot of attention from, you know, his, the, the Good Samaritan that was helping him the whole time, you know. Lovely young lady sort of bear hugging him and sort of making sure he was OK. And um, I think that sort of eased it a bit. Dom is transported to hospital for a brain scan. A few days later, lifeguards receive news that Dom will soon make a recovery from his concussion. <laughs> 